Today I'd just like to walk you through getting started with the DOS toolkit. We're not going to worry initially about installing anything on our local machine. We're just going to get started with using our Studio Cloud. So you can follow the link from the DOS toolkit website to go to the Studio Cloud. And when you go there, you'll end up somewhere looking like this. In your case, you're going to need to click sign up. We can just use the free plan. And you just need to put in your email address, a password, a first and last name and click sign up. At that point, you'll be taken directly through to a, pan in, a, a, a view, a website that's going to look like this. So in my case, it's a, it's associated, I signed up with a Gmail account, so it's associated my photo, it's picked that out, but it may not have done that for you. But it'll look very empty and, and it might not be clear what you do. And so we're just going to click new project here. Our Studio Cloud is a version of our studio that runs in the cloud, which means somebody else's computer. This means that when we want to set up a new instance, uh, they need to actually, their computers need to start working and, and do that for us. And so most of actually what this video is going to be is me trying to kill time while we're waiting for our studio cloud to, to load things. And so we are given a, an RStudio instance, and so that is this bit. We want an R script. We want, we want somewhere where we can run some R code. So we're going to go File, you know, New File, we're going to go R script. And don't worry if this doesn't make sense, uh, what we're doing here. Uh, all of this is explained. You'll eventually learn all of it as part of the DOS toolkit. Uh, but we're just trying to get started. And so we, we're going to type in some R code and the code that we're going to take is from the DOS toolkit and it's these first four aspects. So copying that, pasting that in, and then we're going to highlight that and click run. What we're doing here is we're installing packages. And what that means is that we're taking bits of code that other people have written and we're making them available for us to use. You only need to do this once per computer, or in our case, once per our Studio Cloud session. And this makes it a lot easier for us to use our code because we don't have to type everything from scratch ourselves. We can use code that other people have written. However, because we are downloading an awful lot of code that other people have written, uh, it can take a while. And so, so this is going to take a few minutes. While we're waiting for this, I'll just show walk you through a few of the modules that we can use in the DOS toolkit. So the DOS toolkit is a collection of lessons and they're grouped together in modules. So I'll just scroll down. The first module is Hello World. And we've got some instructions here on the code that we're gonna to use to run this and, and we'll, we'll actually use that in this video in a moment. Uh, but this module contains the following lessons. Um, so getting and setting up RStudio. And so this is just familiarizing yourself with what RStudio is and what R is. And then to Hello World. So this is just sort of perhaps inspiring you as to what you will be able to do once, once you're a little further along your R journey, just sort of showing you some of the code and what it produces. And you don't need to worry too much about exactly what it's doing. It's more just sort of see the big picture and see what's happening. And then finally, one of the really nice bits of R is the R community that has sprung up. It's a very supportive community compared with some other languages and very welcoming of new learners. And so this, this lesson is all about uh, some ways that you can get involved and there's lots of user groups, there's lots of lists and emails um, that, you can, that you can sign up for and be part of. And, and I think that this is probably the best way to learn is to, to try to immerse yourself in the R community. 
Now, one thing when we're, when we're coding is that we're going to have an awful lot of errors. Uh, essentially, coding is just moving from error to error and trying to, um, if you eventually, if you solve enough errors, then you, uh, if you fix enough errors, then you get a, you get some results, but that's essentially, well, that's my experience anyway. And so becoming comfortable with the idea that what we're doing is we're fixing errors essentially is an important, is an important skill. And this is why we've got a whole module on it. So firstly, the first point is to realize, oh, and, and here we have, um, so we don't quite have an error here, but we've got R asking us something. So we're just going to read this. These packages have more recent versions available. Would you like to update them? And we're giving an option one, all two CRAN, three, none, and four, only this one. And so in this case, we're going to type one for all, and we're just going to hit enter. And that's just going to install a bunch of other additional packages. So as I was saying, uh, this skill of being able to read the sometimes cryptic error messages uh, that R is giving you is something that we try to we try to teach a little bit in these lessons. And then also how to go out and use Stack Overflow and Google and and um, and other resources such as that to help um, solve your help solve your errors and and it's perfectly normal to be getting errors um, all of us it's just working through errors that that's all coding is another really important skill is how to make examples that uh, another person can actually execute and see what the error is that you're getting and so we've got a whole lesson on making reproducible examples and what this allows us to do is as a teacher it just makes it easy for us to help you because we can actually see what the error is um, ourselves. We can we can run it on our local machine. We can we can reproduce it. Right. So we've finished um, installing all of the the, the supporting function uh, packages that we're going to need. So we're just going to scroll back up to the code. So we've run all of these. These are just supporting bits of code. And now we're going to install the actual DOS toolkit. So we'll copy that. We'll paste that there. We highlight that. We click run. This one shouldn't take quite as long. And so what this is doing is it's grabbing all of the code that all of the students have written and it's and it's making it available to us on, on this cloud instance. And we're nearly done. And so we might like to get started with the first module. And so we'll copy and paste some code to get started with the first module. Paste that down there, highlight it, click run. And I'm using uh, Safari on a Mac. And so we're gonna pop up, we're gonna get this error sort of pop up and it's just gonna make sure that we are okay with this pop up. And so we're going to click that yes, we're okay. And we've got the first module. So that's a very brief overview of how to get started with the DOS toolkit. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different modules um, available for you to try right now. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see what you do with this. And thank you very much for, for trying out the DOS toolkit. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to get in touch. Thanks very much. Have a nice day.